Our story begins by showing us an overhead view of the woods. Zooming into those woods, we see a young lady walking. She follows a thin rope connected to the trees. It has a note on it, saying the single word, follow. The situation seems rather normal until the girl hears loud whispers coming from an unknown source. She looks around but sees nothing unusual. A second note she finds tells her to keep going. Shortly after, she locates a cabin, a few crows fly and scares her. Once she comes to the front door of the cabin, a final note instructs her to enter it. As she does this, we are told the girl is Laurel Miller, and the year is 1997. She calls out to someone named Michael. While Laurel continues to slowly walk inside the empty cabin, a boy abruptly comes out to scare her. He is around the same age as she is, telling her it was a joke. He says this is supposed to be romantic, yet Laurel does not have the same idea of romance. What is romantic though, is a box containing a necklace that he presents to the girl he likes. It is her birthday present, he says. Despite today not being her birthday, Michael could not wait. According to him, the diamonds on the necklace are real. Laurel tells him she loves it. When they kiss, she feels troubled and Michael asks her what is wrong. She says, it is just a headache. The moment Laurel turns around, a man is there yelling name, startling her with Michael. He is her father, who commands her to get in the car. As they ride, the man says he wanted her to stay away from Michael, but she says they are getting married while presenting the necklace he got her. He does not want his daughter to marry him. Unlucky for him, the girl reminds her dad she will be turning 18 next week, meaning he cannot stop them. Then she asks why he hates Michael. It's not the boy he hates, it's himself. He had many plans for Laurel, only to have them spoiled. Soon he starts apologizing to her, and with it, he starts to speed. Laurel urges her father to slow down. However, the man yells that darkness is coming for her. At this moment, he has become a maniac, saying he can't let his turn 18. After driving through a wooden fence, he is about to drive into a house. Laurel steers the wheel to prevent that disaster from actualizing. What happens instead is a truck slamming into them. Since they are still alive, Laurel's father takes a shard of broken glass and uses it to take his life. His last words are that he could not allow an unspecified them to take her. The scene changes completely to show another girl who is scared for a reason unknown. She is bloodied, which makes her start calling the emergency number. Thankfully, this tense situation was a nightmare she wakes up from. Like with Laurel before her, we get told she is Molly Hartley, and it is 2008. She notices she has a nosebleed. During breakfast, Molly talks to her dad, Robert. He tells her she is going to a good school. It's one of the best in the state. The man wants her to promise him she will give it a chance. She just slightly nods her head. Afterward, we see the prestigious school Molly will be attending. Robert drives his daughter to it, starting the girl's first day. She sits in the principal's office, and he looks at her record. It prompts him to say she is an excellent student. He thinks she will find Huntington Prep as challenging as her last school. Soon a girl enters the room, who the principal says will escort Molly to her classes. Entering the first class, the girl, Alexis, introduces the newcomer to everyone. She speaks highly of Molly by saying she had a 4.0 GPA at her previous school. When they sit at their desks, a boy notices Molly and smiles at her. Another girl becomes jealous seeing it. During lunchtime, Alexis tells Molly she has a close relationship with Jesus. Alas, Molly starts feeling troubled, so she is forced to enter the washroom. As she sits against the wall there, a girl suddenly exits a stall. All she tells Molly is that she can't hide in there all day because the former tried. After school, Molly goes to a store to pick out sweets. She hears ominous sounds that sound like whispers. This scares the girl, and she puts back the candy before leaving the store. We should recall that Laurel experienced the same phenomenon in the woods. Outside, Molly hears those sounds even louder. Then she bumps into the boy from school who smiled at her. It startles her to the ground. While she is still down there, he introduces himself as Joseph Young. After he helps her up, he invites Molly to come with him. But she brings up a girl from class, guessing she is his girlfriend. Once he says they could still be friends, she replies saying she does not need this kind of trouble. At home, she looks at a photo of herself with her mom. She has to put it back in the box it was in. The girl follows this by tossing the box in the trash. This raises the question of what her mom did to receive such treatment. For dinner, Molly eats Chinese food with her dad. He asks her about school, and she says it was fine. However, the man was hoping things would be better than simply fine. It doesn't take long for their talk to escalate into an argument. Molly tells him to stop acting like everything is okay, for it never will be. We learn she is upset due to her mother, who is locked away in a psychiatric hospital for a reason that has not been revealed. 
All Robert can do is promise his daughter that no one will ever hurt her again. As she does homework in her room, she notices the light turn on in the washroom, so she enters it, finding her mom sitting on the floor. Her mom wants Molly to pray with her, and she f takes her daughter to the floor to engage in the act. After Molly says she has sinned, her mother says she knows what the girl is now. She tells her daughter to close her eyes because she can save her. While she puts her hand over Molly's eyes to close them, the girl opens them in time to witness about to attack her. This causes her to wake up at her desk. Conveniently, her alarm goes off too. When she arrives at her English class, she sees Joseph has written an interesting message to greet her with. It puts a smile on Molly's face. She tries to pass through the space between the desks, but the jealous girl is intentionally blocking her path. Thus, she goes around. Then the teacher arrives and instructs his students they will be reading the Bible today. Yet it will not be read in a religious context. One girl Leah takes issue with this, saying her parents don't pay a lot for her school to have her engage in a Alexis says she already has a which makes the teacher reply that they will use the same edition as with all of their other texts. Alexis finds this problematic due to not being just another text. It is the word of God, not a novel they should receive a pop quiz on. To her, studying it in a non-religious way is profane. As she argues with the teacher, Molly is experiencing disturbing visions. They lead to her having a nosebleed, so she has to leave class. Occupying the washroom, Molly hears the sounds again. She is scared, checking stalls and calling out to anyone who might be there, but she finds no one. The poor girl keeps getting haunted until it brings her to the floor. Thankfully, Alexis enters the room to see the trouble her friend is in. The scene concludes with her calling for help. Then, Molly sits in a room where a woman enters to say she is Dr. Emerson. She thinks Molly had a panic attack in class, a statement the girl corrects to a nosebleed. Emerson knows about the girl's medical history, saying her mom's her in the chest with scissors. Molly can't remember what happened. All she knows is her mom is locked up somewhere. The doctor assures Molly they won't let anything happen to her. In the library, Molly sees a mysterious person walking behind a bookshelf, trying to see where this person went. She can't find anyone, so she resorts to sitting on the floor to read about mental disorders. Soon Joseph scares her with his sudden presence. He looks at the book she was looking at and is surprised at the subject matter. Seeing it prompts him to jokingly diagnose her with Ebola because of her nosebleed. As the duo walks in the hallway, they encounter Molly's dad. The man is upset with his daughter that she did not call him after having her problem. Subsequently, they meet in the car, and he says he worries about her. Molly says he never used to worry. She also tells him to stop controlling her life. Then she sees a parking card on the dashboard that is from the psychiatric hospital. From this, she infers that her father visited her mom. She is his wife, he says. He cannot simply abandon her. While getting dressed in her room, Molly hears the water running in the washroom. She enters it to turn the faucet off. Upon looking in the mirror, she hears the ominous whispers. After a short while, a zombie ghost appears out of nowhere to scare our heroine. The door also closes, which she tries to open. Molly calls out to her father to help her do it, but he can't open it either. Therefore, this situation results in the girl collapsing due to stress. She wakes up in a hospital bed and sees her dad there to assure her she will be okay. The doctor says she likely has a tumor in her sinus cavity. It would explain the nosebleeds, the headaches, and the vision problems Molly is having. The doctor schedules a surgery for tomorrow morning. Later, we see the operation taking place. Robert has a hard time watching it behind the door. After the surgery, Molly wakes up and starts talking to the nurse near her. Once the nurse turns around, Molly sees she is really her mother. She uses a pair of scissors to girl in her chest, causing her to exit this nightmare. Instead of her mom, her dad is now there to inform her of the surgery's completion. Then he says she has a visitor. It is Alexis, who came with flowers. She also brought several homework assignments for Molly to stay on top of her studies. All of her kind doings make Molly ask her why she is so nice to her. Alexis avoids answering such a question. She asks her friend if she has been saved in the form of a baptism. Molly says her parents don't believe in it. However, her classmate is only interested in what Molly thinks. The girl does not know how to answer Alexis. The last thing she brought for Molly was a book about Prior to leaving, the considerate girl says she prays for her every night. When Alexis leaves, Molly places the book in a drawer like she wants nothing to do with it. At a different time, she sits in class again. Joseph turns around to smile at her, and she smiles back. As Molly walks in the hallway with Alexis, the latter expresses her gladness with Molly's return. 
There is a calculus quiz tomorrow. She wants to help Molly study for. After they part ways, Joseph meets Molly to welcome her back. He thinks she underwent brain surgery, but she says she didn't. The boy wants her to come to his party tonight, something she seems to be uncertain about. He writes the gate code on her hand. Before leaving, he says she can bring anyone she wants as long as it's a girl. Following this, Molly encounters Joseph's girlfriend Susie. She tries to confuse the new girl by saying Joseph does not truly want her to come to the party. At this moment, Leia bumps into her from behind. She seems to have done this to save Molly. In the lunchroom, Leia says they should both go to the party. The reason she gives for wanting to go is that there is nothing else to do. She also tells her to ditch Alexis. At home, Molly lies to her father by saying she is going to a study group. There will be a calculus test tomorrow. The problem with what she said is that the girl leaves her calculus book at home and her dad notices. So he goes outside to deliver it to her. Now she rides with a textbook in Leia's car. The girl tells Molly an interesting fact that Joseph's father owns half of the city. On the topic of fathers, Leia says hers lost his life last year to throat cancer. Then she discovered he was not even her real dad. Since Leia shared a secret about her family, Molly decides to do the same. She says her mom tried to take Molly's her in the washroom. Either Molly does not know the reason for this, or she does not want to mention it. Regardless, we don't get to hear anything about the motive for it. The next scene shows the duo arriving at the party, and a delighted Joseph greets them before stealing Molly from her friend. Occupying the inside of his house, she tells him he is rich. She also asks where Susie is, making him wonder why. He says they are no longer in a relationship. Switching the topic to Molly, he says she looks different out of her school uniform. He meant that as a compliment. Afterward, they dance outside with the crowd. Once they are about to kiss, a goofy guy interrupts them, telling Joseph about a certain problem he has to deal with. As Molly dances alone, Susie pushes her from behind out of anger. She does not want the new girl to be there. But Molly has some upsetting news for the girl. Susie's ex-boyfriend invited her. Susie attacks her with words by saying everyone knows Molly is a mental case like her mom. Thus, their interaction quickly escalates into a physical fight. Fortunately, Molly takes an easy victory by grabbing Susie's arm, giving her quite an injury. Then she comes to Lee and tells her she wants to go home. Alas, Lee claims to be too intoxicated to drive, so Molly resorts to climbing over the fence to start walking away from the party. Checking her phone, she sees five missed calls from her father. She calls the man, who wants to know where she is. Molly asks him to pick her up, but the bad reception makes her end the call. She starts walking in the dark in an area with very few people. Eventually, she comes to a payphone that she uses to call her dad again. She tells him the address of where she is located, and he instructs her to go inside the nearby restaurant to wait for him there. When she ends the call, she sees her mother. She grabs her saying she knows what she is. She also says she cannot let her be filled with darkness. After escaping her mom's hold, Molly runs away. Due to the tense situation, she soon starts panicking and falls to the ground. A bystander rushes to her aid. In the next scene, Robert enters the restaurant where his recovering daughter sits. Molly tells him her mom was there. He says he called the psychiatric hospital to learn she is in her room. She has been there all night. Knowing that Molly is scared, Robert tells her not to be, for he is there for her. At school, the girl comes to Susie to say she is sorry for the injury she gave her. Susie just says she knows what Molly is and starts walking away. Somehow she started saying the same words Molly's mom told her. At this point, Molly has to ask her what she is. Hearing the same statement from two different people can't be a coincidence. Unfortunately, Susie does not give her an answer. Then she sees Joseph, who says he was worried about her. She tells him she did not mean to hurt Susie, but he cares about what happened to Molly not his ex-girlfriend. It seems like no one wants to communicate with anyone because she starts crying and walks away. The girl wants everyone to leave her alone. Afterward, she sits in Emerson's office, telling the doctor how her experience seeing her mom felt real. Emerson replies that fear is a powerful emotion. It can play with a person's mind. She tells Molly she is normal, yet the girl says there is nothing normal about her. At the end of their session, Emerson gives her a card to call the number on it any time she needs to talk. Once Molly leaves the office, she sees Leia waiting for her session. She says she is sorry to Molly, and she should have taken her home the night of the party. She also knows about it being Molly's birthday tomorrow. Leia expresses her desire for them to do something on the special day. As Molly is walking home, she encounters Alexis on the street. She invites Molly inside the nearby community center. But the girl says she cannot with no further explanation. Alexis assures her that whatever she is going through, they can help. If Molly accepts... She will be blessed with eternal salvation. 
Sadly, our heroine walks away from her caring friend. She comes home and calls her father to leave a message for her. Since the man wanted her to do this, she did. While walking upstairs, she hears sounds coming from her room. Thus, she slowly enters it to walk into her washroom. In there, Molly finds an open window which she closes. Then, she turns around and observes her mom there, holding scissors. Frightened, the girl demands that her mother get away from her. All the woman claims to want is to save her daughter. She says Molly doesn't understand what she is about to become. Furthermore, the girl was for some reason never meant to live. At this moment, Molly's mom says she lost her life the night on the washroom floor inside a restaurant. Suddenly, a mysterious woman appeared to offer a deal to the grieving parents. She promised to give life to Molly. However, after 18 years, Molly would become reclaimed by an unspecified group. Responding to this revelation, Molly shouts that her dad would have said something, but her mother says he refuses to believe the truth. According to the mom, if she does not stop her daughter now, the girl will do terrible things. So she tries to Molly, only to get pushed away by her. Molly starts running, and her mom catches her. They struggle near the stairs until Molly manages to throw the woman off. When she lands on the floor, Molly can't believe the act she was forced to commit. She descends the stairs to flip her mother over. Shortly after, Robert arrives to witness his possibly deceased wife. Since he could see her, Molly was not imagining this. The girl does not know what to believe. She gets into an argument with her father over what her mom revealed. He dismisses all of it as nonsense. Yet Molly seems to start hovering in the direction of her mother's beliefs. Her argument with her dad results in her knocking him out with a vase to run out of the house. Then she goes to the community center, the same one she refused to enter earlier. The desperate, confused girl knocks on the window to get Alexis to come out. Once her friend does, Molly pleads for her help because she does not know where else to go. Therefore, Alexis tells the troubled girl to follow her. They enter a church and Alexis gives Molly some white clothes to put on. If the latter will accept she will be saved, says Alexis. Subsequently, the duo enters the water where baptisms occur. There, Alexis initiates Molly's baptism by holding her in the water. Upon being taken out, Alexis has some very upsetting news for our heroine. She says she knows about Molly's mom and what the woman believes. This knowledge prompts her to plunge Molly back into the water, where Alexis holds her there with more strength. While they both struggle, Alexis wants her friend to know that this is her saving the poor girl. Woefully, this dreadful action is the sole way in which Molly can be saved. But the one being drowned overpowers Alexis and knocks her head against the concrete. The injured girl soon stands to say she is sorry to Molly. As she continues to run outside, we notice it is now night. She gets in front of a truck on the road and Joseph is exiting it. The boy is surprised to see her. After he gets the crying Molly in his vehicle, he wants her to tell him what happened. When they arrive at his house, she has already informed Joseph of everything she knows. Needless to say, he does not believe her. He finds it hard to believe that her soul belongs to the devil. What he proposes is for them to get out of this town. His dad has a safe with an abundance of money inside of it. There is enough for them to go anywhere. Molly says he doesn't have to do this, but he responds by kissing her and saying he will be right back as he exits the truck. Left alone, Molly calls Dr. Emerson to leave a message stating she is in trouble. She adds that she is at Joseph's house. Then Joseph calls out to her, making the girl exit the truck to enter his house. Calling out to him does not get her an answer. The inside of his house is very creepy, dark, and empty. He calls her in, yet strangely he isn't there to greet her. So Molly enters the backyard to continue her search for Joseph. However, he isn't there either, adding extra discomfort to this moment. Once she enters another room, she finally finds him. He has a cake with a candle prepared for the girl whose birthday is tomorrow. To Molly, seeing this is unsettling. She wants to get out of there and says he is scaring her. In a few seconds, Emerson arrives. Molly thinks she is there due to the message she left, but the doctor says she doesn't even know about the message. At this point, the scene gets elevated from uncomfortable to sinister. Emerson gives a weird reason for her being there that it's almost Molly's birthday. She says they are all there for her, and they all watched her grow. She was chosen. The doctor tells her she is lucky, because she will have power like no one before her. Soon the girl witnesses her dad being brought in against his will. He instantly tells his daughter, he did not mean for any of this to happen. A flashback shows us that Emerson was the woman who came to Molly's parents to make the deal that saved the girl's life. Robert yells for them to take him, for it was his mistake. Molly tells the deceptive doctor she does not want the power she will receive. Then Emerson puts a knife on the floor and says that if Molly takes her life, the pact will dissolve. Robert wants his daughter to do it. Hence she grabs the knife and approaches her dad while crying. 
Shortly after the clock strikes midnight, Molly uses the knife on instead of him. Yet it does not. Moreover, it inflicts zero damage. Molly gets to hear Emerson say that she always belonged to them. The next scene has our heroine talking to a doctor in a hospital. He says they had her father under observation for one week. We see the man occupying a room. The doctor thinks some interaction with his daughter could help him come out of his shell. But Molly has changed. She says she cannot do this and needs to move on. Surprised by her words, the doctor thinks she shouldn't give up on her father. He isn't her dad anymore, says the girl who is very likely no longer human. Shifting to the final scene, we see Molly giving a speech outside at her school. She says she believes they all have a special destiny. They are the generation that will change the world. When she finishes, everyone cheers, and it looks like a good ending. Even the music makes it look like it is. However, we know this ending is anything but good. A missing poster of Alexis lies on the ground. She was one of the few good people in this film, which concludes by showing us Molly walking with Joseph to enter a car.